Let's go January 2021 because this month was incredible for my income report with Debt Free Millennials. Stick around. I'm going to be sharing exactly how much money I brought in January, the first month of a really great year. Let's do it. Hey guys, it's Justine with Debt Free Millennials, the channel to help you crush your debt and live payment free. Now, if you're new to the channel, we talk about all the ways that you can get on your debt free journey, pay off that debt, and then continue to live debt free. So if you're new here, scroll down to the bottom, click that red subscribe button. You'll never miss another video from me. And part of this is my monthly income report series and you guys told me you are into these videos <laughs> so I decided to keep making them for this year and I'm really glad I did because this past month was bananas. Let's hop into the numbers and I'll show you how much I made. All right, my very first offering digital products, which includes Budget Bootcamp and my workbook brought in $496, which was just 3% of my total income for January. Now YouTube and Google AdSense brought in $1,802, which was 12% of my total revenue. And I just realized I'm using income and revenue interchangeably. What I really mean is revenue. So this is the money that I'm making before taxes, before expenses. I take out 35% for taxes that's set aside. I actually have a separate, a whole separate bank account so that I'm not tempted to use that money for anything else. So I transfer every single month, I transfer 35% of what I made into that savings account. And then every quarter, I pay my quarterly taxes. And I also have my expenses. My expenses per month can range from anywhere from 300 to sometimes on the high end, $1,000, and that's pretty rare. But mainly it's about 300 to $500 per month, and mainly that's due to different subscriptions and software that I use to run my business, such as an online calendar, Zoom, Photoshop, uh, having a video element subscription package so I can create cool text and graphics for you guys. That's all included in my expenses. So I wanna let you guys know that as I'm jumping through these numbers, this is revenue, this is not take home. All right, back into it. Okay, next up is affiliates. I'm really working hard on affiliates this year and I brought in $2,208, which was 15% of my revenue. And then this leaves my biggest category, which was freelance gigs, which brought in $10,500, which was a whopping 70% of my revenue, which means I brought in $15,006. That is bananas. It's crazy, guys, because I have never made that much money in one month in the history of this business. I got close to it last year. Last year, I think I made 14 in one month. This month, I have topped that. So it's, it's, let's, let's get into the wins. All right, so my wins for this month, we hit 28,000 subscribers on YouTube. Thank you so much for sharing this channel, liking the videos and commenting. That all helps just push this channel out there to even more people so that we can get more debt-free millennials community members on board. It's so awesome. The next thing is I hit 10,000 Instagram followers. Now, I know this may not seem like a big deal because there are people who have like tens of thousands of thousands of followers on Instagram, but when you hit that 10,000 mile mark on Instagram, it gets you the swipe up feature so I can easily connect Instagram to my YouTube content, which makes it so easy for you to hop from one platform to the other. I love that and it's made it's going to make things so much easier for me as I continue to make content for you guys here on this channel. The next thing is I don't know if I can say this, but I'm going to say this. CBS News reached out to me. So I won't go into the details of 
what they're wanting to do because nothing has been published yet. But they did reach out to me and I just was like so floored that they found my email address, first of all, and wanted to talk to me. And so I hope something comes out of it. We'll see. Right now it was just a phone call. So big things are happening. All right, the next thing is I've really been focusing on affiliates. Affiliates is going to be one of my goals for 2021. And I'd really like for that to be like 40% of my total revenue. And right now, like this month, obviously, it was nowhere close to what freelancing brought in. But I'm very confident in some new affiliate programs that I've joined. And then I've also increased some of my affiliate commissions and payouts with some of my partners. And so I just think that this affiliate marketing is the way to go as a uh, incorporating another revenue stream into your online business. It's so awesome. If you guys want me to do a whole video on what affiliate marketing is, comment below. I'd love to speak more about it and see how maybe you could utilize it for your own side gig or side hustle. All right, the obstacles. Let's talk about how I am due to have my very first baby in like seven weeks. Yeah, there's not much talking to do other than Holy shit, I need to get stuff organized and together. <laughs> so what I mean by that is when you're self-employed and you go on maternity leave, you don't have a coworker or a backup who can just film the videos for you or edit the videos for you. Because I'm the only person that works on debt-free millennials full-time, I've got to do that work myself. So I'm trying to front load as much of my videos as I can so that I can focus on my baby and being a new mom, especially especially that first month and a half. But I am planning on taking around three to four months of maternity leave. And that means I really got to hustle my booty off to make sure I've got some stuff in place and that I have videos for you guys going while I'm taking a little break. So that's kind of been my biggest obstacle and I feel like I can see why they say the third trimester feels the busiest because you're running around trying to get all the baby stuff done and then also trying to make a plan for maternity leave and I feel like there's even more pressure being self-employed and trying to figure out maternity leave. By the way, if you guys want to check out my video on how I've planned and prepared for maternity leave, including saving enough money to supplement my income, at least for three to four months, you can check out this video up here. I will link to, and that could give you some clues if you're interested in doing maternity leave while you're self-employed. Okay, that's that was January for you, and I am beyond grateful for all of the opportunities that have come my way. And I think, you know, going into, let's see, this is my, so this is my fifth year of going into Debt Free Millennials. And I just think it's been so awesome to see the growth and the change year over year, fine tuning some things that I've done in the past or completely pivoting to a different income stream. It's been really awesome. I hope you find these videos helpful and encouraging so that you may one day start your own side hustle that could turn into a full-time gig. If you're into that kind of stuff, make sure you give this video a like and I'll catch you next month for my next DFM income report.